Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, my name is Adora Yin and today I'm going to be sharing my tips on how I got a star in IGCSE physics. So in case you didn't watch the first video I posted, which was my reaction to my IGCSE results from this year, I got all A stars in my science subjects and I'm doing this video series on tips for you know, how I did that. I already did one on biology and chemistry, so you can go watch that if you're interested. And today's one is dedicated to physics because I feel like it's a completely different thing to study for since I feel like the study methods for physics are just different, so I wanted to share mine with you guys since it's definitely really challenging. Anyway, the course code that I did was 0625 Cambridge a CIE um, IGCSE physics. Okay, anyway, I'm just gonna cut to the chase right now since I don't think you want to be hearing all a bunch of useless stuff. So, the first thing I wrote down is that you gotta understand the syllabus. So, Cambridge is really good for putting out a complete syllabus for everything you need to know for the subject, and it's really useful for physics. Like, it tells you the exact definitions, the exact wordings, exact terms that you need to know, memorize. So, you have to familiarize yourself with this, uh, with this syllabus, and you gotta know the key topics. It tells you exactly what you need to know, so you don't have to go and do like extra things that might be well useless when coming to the exam like obviously learning extra stuff is going to be good for your overall understanding but for the purposes of taking the exam there's some things that you don't need to know and when you do go through the syllabus you'll realize that like a lot of the topics it doesn't actually require that much depth but anyway yeah that's why i say that going through my syllabus is my literal holy grail okay and also there's only six topics in physics which doesn't seem like a lot in comparison to the 21 in IJCSE biology, but the thing is, they're really long, and you gotta delegate time to each of them according to the difficulty to you, like your personal, how you personally find them, as well as the actual topic material, because some, some chapters are way fatter than the other ones. For example, like chapter two about thermal physics, it's not actually that hard. Like I think in class, we only took like a few weeks to cover it, whereas for topic four, electricity and magnetism, everybody found it the hardest. Well, basically everyone. And it took us like a few months, I think. So you really got to make sure that you know how much time you need to spend on each topic because they're all way differently. Oh, and also topic six about space. Um, usually it's also pretty easy because most of it is like kind of common sense or like stuff you learn in primary. Um, so yeah, you don't need to spend as much time on the ones that are easier to you, obviously, but make sure you put your time wisely to the topics that matter, okay? Anyway, the second thing I put down is that physics is all about conceptual un understanding, which is why I say that it's so different from biology and chemistry. So you gotta focus on understanding the concepts rather than just pure note memorization, although there are some instances where you have to just memorize the you know, content, like the word-for-word -word definitions and stuff like that, but most of physics is about your conceptual understanding. Most of the questions are more so about applying your knowledge and the formula to different questions, which is why you gotta know the syllabus from front to back, because it's not listed in order. The questions aren't listed in order of topics, so you gotta know when to apply what thing that you know, you know? Um, and you can't just recite it because every scenario that they give you and the questions are different. So you gotta just like, you know, like that and put put one and two together. Okay, and then the next thing is about how I made my revision notes for physics. So basically what I did is same as for biology and chemistry, I had a Google Drive and I made a separate doc for each topic. So that, that would be six topics in total. And I would use save my exams religiously. So basically while I was making my notes, I would put save my exams on one side of my screen and then my notes doc on one the other side and I would just reference save my exams to put in my own doc because I found that that way I memorized things a lot easier and um, the knowledge actually went in my brain um, instead of just like purely relying on save my exams. And also the save my exams website, like a lot of different, well, notes websites, they're good but there are some instances where they don't actually cover the full syllabus um, or there's some instances where it covers more than what you need to know. So that's why I put it into my own doc. And I also, in doing that, I format it in a way that I can understand better and I use color coding and stuff like that, which I also talked about in my bio and chem video. And also, you gotta use a lot of diagrams, charts, 
bullet points to make the information easier to digest, okay? If you look at my notes, which I'll put up on the screen, it's filled with this kind of stuff because as I said, physics is all about conceptual understanding and diagrams and charts are like the number one thing you have to do to develop this understanding and so that you can visualize it in your head. So for example, in my topic one, for motion, I made distance time graphs as well as velocity time graphs for every scenario possible, like uh, stationary, accelerating, decelerating, um, traveling at a constant speed. And that helped me because whatever graph came up in the final exam, it would not seem unfamiliar to me at all, and I know how to apply um, like graphing to any scenario possible. Um, and a similar thing I did with light ray diagrams for topic three for waves. So I just did one for every single possible um, image that could be formed by light rays. And I also wrote down like the properties. I'll put it up on the screen so that you can copy it if you like. And the next thing, I just wrote a brief bullet point about color coding because color coding is so important for me. It helps me understand information so much more. For example, for my topic three for waves, I just color coded all the different properties. And every time I mention it in my notes or it's in a formula or something, I would just use the same color coding. Um, yeah, okay. And then a really distinct part of physics that you don't find in biochem or computer science is the amount of formulas. So that's why I made a separate doc just purely for my formulas. It's basically my formula booklet. Um, and I arranged them in the way that they are listed in the syllabus. So I used the exact same symbols and I sorted them by the six topics. And I did this because it's like an easy way to see all the, all the formulas listed out um, and you can reference them at any time. And seeing them together is a lot more helpful when you're trying to apply it to a problem because in many instances, problems require you to take formulas from for different things and put them together for whatever like physics scenario question they give you, which is why having them together can show you in a clear way which links to what, you know? And also you need to write formulas for all your working when you're doing your actual papers, just so you can go back and reference it and you can check if you made any mistakes and also you get extra marks if you write down your formula. Like your working is so important in paper four guys. Okay, also units are super duper duper important in physics. Like you cannot forget your units. And you gotta make sure that you know your SI units or standard units for every single quantity of measure, okay? Because it's so easy to mix them up and if you're not using the standard units, you're gonna get the entire answer wrong and like miss out a few zeros or have too many zeros um, or like get the wrong decimal place just because you don't know your units and that's such a waste because you know the formula, you know how to apply it, but you just get the units wrong and that's really sad, okay? And I've made that mistake millions of times, which is why you gotta learn from me. <laughs> and the next thing is unit prefixes and conversions, which follows on from what I was saying about writing down your units. So for example, one extremely common pitfall is that a lot of people mistake millimeters for being, wait, millimeters for being one million millimeters in one meter because of the name, but in reality, it's actually 1,000 millimeters in one meter. So make sure you get those conversions right because you're definitely, you're guaranteed to have to do that in all of the papers. And what else? Uh, I also put down in my notes common past paper questions and I would solve them with working in my notes so that I could just reference them and reference how I would do the working in the final paper. And following on from that, I also wrote in my notes how to do questions, for example, how I use the left hand rule and the right hand rule when it comes to uh, electricity and magnetism. And then the next most important thing about physics is doing as many past paper questions as possible. You gotta practice with past paper exam questions. There's many websites that have tons of free IGCSE past paper questions and they're all sorted by year. I'm gonna put the one that I used in the description below so you can also use it, but they're all free and it's really good. And one thing about the codes of how they're listed, like the exam paper codes of how they're listed on the websites that I made a note to explain is that M, S, and W, they're like different um, times of the year that the past paper exams are from. So M would be like the March one, the February, March one. S is the May, June round and W is the October or November round. And sometimes there are also time zone variants, which depend on which part 
of the world you're located in. Um, for me personally, I'm in Hong Kong, so my time zone uh, variant for the paper was always number two. I think that goes for most of Asia. I'm not that sure, honestly. Okay, anyway, while you're doing past papers, you gotta make sure to not look at answers, okay? Because how are you gonna learn from doing that? You can only look at answers after. So when you check the mark scheme after you finish, you should familiarize yourself with how the points are awarded because this teaches you how to structure your answers. For example, if a question is worth four marks and it's like a pros and cons question, then you probably have to list at least four different bullet points of pros and cons. You know what I mean? And then, yeah, always write your working for calculations, as I said before, so that you can go back and check them and you can also, also earn partial credit. And also, if you find a topic in the past paper questions that you're really not that confident in, I suggest you to, okay, well, number one, ask your teacher, obviously. Secondly, you could use a workbook. So our school gave us this workbook. It's from Cambridge and it's deliberately for IGCSE, but you can use a similar workbook because it's sort of by topic. So you can just go to the topic that you find different so for example here I would write my answers in pencil and correct them in red ink. I skipped a lot of the really easy questions because there isn't really a point in doing extremely easy questions other than to boost your ego, which is fine. But if you're like if you're short on time, just skip the easy questions and do the hard ones. For example, this one has like challenge questions at the end of every chapter. Um, so I did most of them because, you know, not for fun, but like for extra extra learning and also you never know what's going to come up in the test right and it's always better to do more than to do less and in the next section i'm going to be talking a little bit about exam technique and obviously the number one thing you should do is to read the questions very carefully you got to pay close attention to the wording of the questions because you don't want to be doing the question and then midway realize that you didn't properly understand it or miss some key information because every piece of information in a question is going to be important in physics especially for igcse they're not gonna put in irrelevant things just to trick you. Like every piece of information I guarantee you has a purpose, even if it's just like setting up the scene or setting up the scenario. And exam technique when it comes to paper six, which is the alternative to practical paper, is that you should practice planning experiments and you should definitely know the practical techniques and apparatus, which is all listed in the syllabus, as well as the safety considerations because they always ask questions about that. And I also recommend that you do a lot more paper six practice if that's um, one of the papers that your school is making you take because it helps you be more comfortable with how questions are structured because it's a little bit different from usual physics questions because they're literally giving you an entire experiment to plan and do and you know um, analyze so you just got to know how it works and I promise you after you figure it out it's really not that challenging you just have to understand Cambridge and why they're asking you questions like that. Anyway, that concludes like the notes that I have on my laptop, but I was just also going to show you guys my binder from my IGCSE physics year because it's obviously like two entire years of material and I just compiled everything that my teacher gave me and like extra worksheets and practice class unit tests that we did because usually for our mocks our teacher gives us way harder questions to you know prep us for like a really challenging version of the test so yeah I just kept those for future reference but as you can see I put these little tabs that are sorted by units so there's one two three four five six topic one is the thickest and topic two is the thinnest so I guess that adds on to my point about how they're all um, completely different and you can't view the topics equally. You gotta assess your personal, not preference, but how hard it is for you. But yeah, just like a quick flick through. I just put in, um, okay, you can't really see, but I just put in like the past worksheets as I was talking about. Um, and there's also a lot of graph practice because knowing how to graph is really important for um, paper six because you do have to do a graph for your practical thing. Okay, here is an example for my graph for the half-life of an isotope. And yeah, as you can see, I did so much graph practice that it's basically natural to me um, to like plan out the uh, to plan out the axes of a graph as well as like graphing it. <laughs> 
but yeah you just gotta be familiar with stuff like that and it's gonna be really helpful in whatever thing you do in the future as well because all science requires graphing there honestly isn't much else that's special in this binder i just wanted to show you guys my hard work of the past two years um but honestly i didn't really use this that much when i was actually revising for the exams because basically i would put in all the relevant information in my online notes and the whole time i would just reference my online notes and past paper questions but yeah that concludes today's video and i really hope that this helped i know that physics is definitely a really challenging subject for everyone and you're not alone and if you're taking your mocks this year or taking your final igcc exams anytime soon i'm wishing you guys the best of luck and if you do have any questions make sure to leave a comment i try my best to read all of them if you don't believe me you can go check because i probably liked most of the comments i'm gonna be posting more in this video series for my study tips including for the subjects computer science um, additional maths english language and literature since people ask me for those and they tend to be harder but yeah you can also follow me on instagram and you can dm me questions but i might not see them also i'm selling my igcse notes for these subjects on the screen and if you're interested in buying them you can feel free to dm me on instagram or email me anytime anyway make sure to subscribe like and do all the stuff turn on post notifications for when i upload a new video and yeah good luck thank you so much for watching Bye!